Now this is a bit of a, an interesting one in that I don't really see someone on this magnitude get exposed every day. But today we're going to be talking about a person called Ace of Hearts Fox. So I'll just I'll just call him Heart Fox. Now, admittedly, I had no idea who this guy was before I saw this thread. But apparently this is like an older guy in the in the in the community. Like he's like a he's a bit more well known. I will say before I even cover anything, right now this is all still a legend. Hard Fox has not put out a statement or a response. In fact, uh, I think all he did was block the person who made this thread. So, uh, you know, this could all be BS. This could be not true. This could be this could be lies. But um, there's a lot of solid evidence in here. And as I said, it's it's a legend. Um, it's gonna stay a legend until he responds publicly but i figured we'd go through this whole thread and go through all the uh the evidence against him alex noble is known online as ace of heart fox groomed a teenager for three years alex is a musician and popular fur youtuber known for their wholesome online persona with a cartoonish high-pitched voice all right provide myself some relief all this to say this is really scary for me please be patient first i want to talk about my time with alex noble as one of my best friends i've ever had and an extremely important figure in my life for a while but in short from the time I was 17 to the time I was 19, Alex, who was 24 to 26 at the time respectively, physically cheated on his long-term partner with me on multiple occasions on and off over the span of those couple years. I had known he had a partner, and it was never my intent to convince him to cheat, but being so young and admiring him so much, along with inventing to be regular about his issues within their relationship, I got caught up in receiving that sort of attention from someone older that I admired and continued to let it happen. I felt immense skill each time, even the last time I spoke to them in 2020. I suggested they tell their partner and come clean, but I assume they never did. We stopped talking in 2020 because their partner felt uncomfortable with Alex spending time with me, rightfully so, and I haven't heard from either of them since. Here's his uh, Instagram. Oh, that's what he looks like. Oh, he's from fucking California? Gross. Alright, here's some DMs between the uh, 17 and 19 year old. Still going through old messages, but bro, imagine being 24 years old and actually talking to a 17 year old about distracting them from their homework. Like high school tomorrow. And still think that's a normal thing for an adult to be talking about. I feel, I just want to watch TV, cuddle, and not think. I've been in a weird funk all day. Same, cuddles would be really nice to VH. Right? It's just one of those nice where any company would be nice. Yeah, exactly. Would you want to hang out on call, or would that be too distracting if you're doing homework? I don't know, because either way, I'm distracted. Lol. Thanks, keep it coming. That's so weird and fucked up, I'm disgusted. Because I'd never talk to a kid like that. Literally, I'm only 23 and I still feel weird about my... I can't read that stupid arrow in the way. Alex and Monroe. Both use they, them pronouns. Monroe's dead name is censored in the FB screenshots. Alex was born in October 1993 and Monroe was born in September 2000. Alex befriended Monroe at a LARP game despite their gap in maturity and life experience. Alex took on a mentor role and the two quickly formed a close bond. In the first screenshot, soon after they first met, Alex affectionately refers to 16-year-old Monroe as the littlest, no way, the littlest rover. What? Boy, where do I even start? You were so intrinsic to Amoretti's creation in the first place, and I absolutely adore the little story we've been able to create. Thank you for giving me challenges and encouraging me to think and do things I normally wouldn't. I appreciate that so, so much. You are an amazing friend and one of the smartest, most creative people I know. Also, thank you for giving Amoretti conflicts and intense moments, I guess, when she normally wouldn't have any. Especially the whole scene on Saturday night. I literally have so many things to say about that, but in short, thank you for making my character cry. And as always, a big thank you to staff for building such a wonderful and exciting world for us to play in, and for doing the absolute most to ensure that every player has a good game. So there are many more that I shared nice moments with, and I want to thank all you too. These are just the few names that really impacted the majority of my weekend. If you had a fun interaction with Amoretti, or you have any questions, ideas, concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to hear them. I hope everyone gets some good rest and recovers nicely, and I can't wait to see you all at the next gathering. You were so convincing that I broke character and felt awful for a second, but I love how quickly we can just jump into character after checking on you and stuff. Thanks for walking for a long ass time for one scene. I'll have to come up with more random ways to shatter her reality. Yes, 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 the whole scene was magnificent and I love how we can jump in and out of character in a snap even in such an intense moment. And I was only convincing because you were. That was a much needed reminder that Karnum is still scary and cruel. What is LARPing? And that Amoretti shouldn't be letting her guard down as easily as she has been. And trust me, I would have walked even further if you wanted me to. I t it 
Totally would have been worth it. Alex and Monroe's inappropriate dynamic bled into their LARP characters, Carnum and Amoretti. Alex played a demon and inspired the creation of Monroe's character, a Celestial Angels, are not a canon concept in Twin Mask Lore, but Carnum nicknamed Amoretti Little Angel. Wait, okay, I'm- okay. So that's what he looked like at the- at the event? He's a vampire! He's Cameron Gerard Davis! I swear if I don't stop and post this thing now, I'm gonna- I swear if I don't stop and post this thing now, I'm gonna keep tweaking and- Oh my god, why do I suck at this? I swear if I don't stop now and post this thing now, I'm gonna keep tweaking it until the end of time, so here, have some angsty beans. There was one time he took me down at night into the valley past the parking lot, like, into the grass, and went on this whole long, fucked up monologue, walking circles around me while I was on my knees in the dark, getting super close and whispering fucked up shit in my ear, and not gonna lie, I'm pretty sure he got hard. It was cool in the moment, like, plot-wise, but looking back, I'm like, gross, dude. Yeah, dude, I thought about that, like... I don't know if it was on purpose, but Amoretti felt very chibi-coated with tiny wings and adorable makeup. Okay, so Amoretti is Monroe's character, and Carnum is, uh, Heart Fox's character. Carnum and Amoretti's di uh, dynamic was fucked. It felt like he got off to defiling something pure. She was very much meant to be innocent and pure and kind-hearted and cute, so I could definitely see that being a thing for him. I agree in that we making characters from parts of ourselves, and I think their dynamic was very reflective of real life. Oh no, this is him. Carnum turns to Amoretti. Till next time, little angel. He follows Honoris to the street. After a few moments of silence that seemed to go on for minutes, he smiled at her. You are correct, little angel. You can only dream. Ugh. And calling it Little Angel is so creepy. You don't understand, Little Angel. I do not come here to grieve in the recent months. No, no, no. A few months back. S. S. I don't even fucking. What Skylander is that? He came to me as a spirit. Fear not, Little Angel. I have no intention of harming you tonight. He exhales smoke in her direction. In this Instagram exchange between Monroe and Alex's ex, Monroe recounts their relationship with Alex. They cuddled and made out whenever they spent time together, and Monroe caught feelings. Alex led Monroe on for three years, and then coldly cut Monroe off soon after hooking up with them. So they were like, groomed, right? But anyways, the emotional stuff started, I want to say around November slash December of 2017. I just turned 17, around when he moved back to his parents' house. I'd gone over to his old house initially because I thought he was cool and I wanted to hang and talk about LARP stuff, but I ended up going home early because he started getting cuddly and touchy and I felt weird. A few months passed before we hung out again. We'd talk on and off over Messenger mostly about LARP stuff and then eventually I started going to a charter school that was pretty close to his parents' house, so I started just going over there to hang out afterwards every week or two. We'd mostly just sit around and listen to music, talk about LARP or video games or whatever he was crafting, watch movies, etc. It was usually pretty normal, but a few weeks in there, was a night where I'd stayed pretty late and we gotten pretty close and he kissed me. Whoa. We never went further than that physically, but almost every time I'd go to his house after that he'd end up making out with me before taking me home late at night. Eventually I stopped going to the charter school so I stopped going over as often, but it would still happen occasionally. Since he'd given me so much attention and made me feel so special, I developed pretty strong feelings for him and I expressed it a couple times, but he'd always sort of managed to avoid talking about it and shut me down while continuing to lead me on. Eventually I started telling him what we were doing was wrong and that he should come clean to you but he was always really nervous and scared about it, for obvious reasons, I think. We stopped hanging out for a while in 2019. I saw you guys at FC 2020, and nothing had happened for a minute by then. Then COVID happened, and around August 2020, he told me you guys had broken up, or were on a break of some sort. And one morning we were talking after being up all night. Things got a little heavy and my parents had left for work, so I invited him over. That morning was the one and only time we ever actually hooked up. And yes, I made him use protection. And he left almost immediately after. I think a few weeks later is when he finally told me we had to stop talking since he was trying to patch things up with you. The last time I spoke to him, I asked him to at least complain to you about everything, since he was going on about starting fresh and turning over a new leaf. But he was still too scared. That's where it ended. I haven't spoken to or seen him since. Sorry it's a lot, and if you have questions or anything, feel free to ask. It's hard to cover everything all at once. Again, I'm really sorry, and I hope you're doing alright. I'm assuming you guys aren't together anymore. Unfortunately, he made you have to be super controlling and antagonistic. Very, very valid reasons to be, and I don't blame you. I'm sorry to hear about the two of you splitting, but also sort of relieved you're not putting up with all that anymore. Rest assured, you're not crazy or unreasonable, and it's alright. I'm trying my best to move forward, and finally work on healing from it and everything, and part of that was finally coming clean and sharing my experience. I just don't want the cycle to keep repeating, and for him and guys like him to keep hurting people, you know? Oh, look at the DM sin. Please call me. Dude, I can tell you're talking to blank. You're both online. I'm on Facebook on my desktop. Did you try to call my phone? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just on my computer. I've sort of just been avoiding my phone whenever possible. It sucks that you gave me this talk about how you don't want to make me feel 
how Mr. Peanut Butter made Diana feel, but blank is your pickles. That would only work if I was interested, which I'm not. Well, of course out on that one, buddy. Alex was in a monogamous relationship with a girlfriend since January 2017. Alex was aware that when she was 17, she was groomed by a 24-year-old and suffered severe trauma as a result. Regardless, Alex decided to inflict that same trauma on another minor. Content warning on the image release, but nobody deserves what he did to her. Oh, I just found this. Bruh. LMFAO, I'm speechless. Literally the year he started grooming me. If you get some screenshots together and write a personal statement, that would be incredible. And don't worry about showing me something that could hurt. I'm already dead and suck. Absolutely, I see what I can dig up as far as screenshots and things go. Unfortunately, most of the really damning stuff was in secret chats because he knew what he was doing, unfortunately. But I'm sure there's at least something. It literally weighs on my mind daily and still finds ways to affect me and my relationships to this day. Even though I haven't spoken to him since 2020, the more time that passes, the more I realize how much it fucked with my head, and I just can't stand the fact that he's carrying on with his life like nothing happened. I did write down a bunch of stuff from our secret chats in my notes, but I know it's not as concrete as a screenshot. What happened happened, unfortunately, just picking up the pieces now. Yeah, but you're in a really good position and you'll be better off. I can't wait to get all this shit out so we can move on. I'm gonna start making memes to help cope now. Literally, pretty much what I've been doing, lol. Question, how old are you again? I was thinking about how I have friends from a bunch of different age groups, and I was like, wait, Lamau. Gaga, I'm 24, haha. <laughs> Jesus, spell check, but yeah, I'm 24. Screenshots from Moreau and Alex's old conversations. Anything damning was usually kept to secret chat or in person because Alex knew it was wrong. However, it's damning in and itself that Alex is alone in bed with a 17 year old. While, what, what is it, 23 or 24? Thanks, dude. I'm trying to be a good noodle. Anyone who's over the age of 20 who speaks like that needs to be put on a list automatically anyway. And no problem, it was great to actually spend time with you yesterday. I'll try not to be a lump of sad stress next time. Next time will be a lot more productive and fun. Yesterday was still good though, it's always nice to just hang out and get some cuddles and lol. Yes, much more productivity and positivity next time. Though it was nice to just laze around, but yeah, it'll be cool to make armor with you next time. I went back to my house on my lunch break and messed with the dagger and the blade portion is coming together nicely. And yeah, thank you for that. It's really calming and you're just really nice to cuddle with. He's such a good boy, we gotta have you guys hang out before he goes back home. And no problem, next time I come over I'll be more prepared for cuddles than last time. Wait, uh, oh. That's, okay, so this is when they were still 17, and they're cuddling. Oh, this is really gross. This is really not looking good for this guy. Yes, definitely, especially now that I have a vehicle that I can actually afford to drive around and visit people. And thank you, much appreciated friend. I'm sorry again for turning what's supposed to be a productive day into sad cuddle puddle. Cuddle puddle? Oh, Jesus Christ. No problem, and it's okay. Days like that happen sometimes. I didn't mind at all. I feel sad. I just want to watch TV, cuddle, and not think. Now about Ace of Hearts Fox. While Ace isn't exactly dancing for a suit, their family-friendly content possibly attracted thousands of minors into the family. Also, we got this guy to blame for the fucking onslaught of children. When the furry fandom made a positive impact. Oh, fuck this guy. He sucks. What a loser. About Young Furries. That The fact that a video called About Young Furries almost got 100,000 views makes me a little bit... Makes me a little bit sad, honestly. A little uncomfortable. God, thousands of... 200,000! God, these people, I can't believe it. I can't believe they would do this. This is tragic. In one video, Alex claimed to a drawing character inspiration from Bob Ross, Steve Irwin, and Mr. Rogers. Oh god, fuck you, eat a dick. These beloved public figures are referred to as the holy trinity of wholesomeness. Seemingly by design, Ace was perceived as a lovable mentor figure for young furries. Anyone who does that, anyone who's like, I am such a wholesome person, I'm such a good person, uh, those people are usually pieces of shit, and you should probably avoid them. Trust me, I know from experience. <laughs> this literally made me tear up. I'm 12 years old, just finished making my second fursuit head, and I've already gone to Wing Kong, the one in my state, the biggest one. I'm technically a young fur, 15, and I just want to say to all the other young furs out there, no one has your sense of creativity, you are a great future for this fandom. Ugh, he, the fact he had all these fucking children, ugh. Gross, yucky feeling. I just finished my first full week of high school. First day was Thursday, so that was a two day week. Second week, Dorian got school canceled for two days. Your voice really fits your character. Thanks for the video. I just started middle school this year. Ugh, Man, I really, ugh. Gross, gross, yucky, yucky, yucky. If half this shit is true, this guy does not need to be around children. Alex is now focusing on a music career, they are studying artist management, and intend to front their own band. This would give Alex direct access to budding musicians and fans, all of which are typically very young. The music industry is infamous for rampant grooming. 
Yeah, who was that one fucking guy that people literally gave, like, their babies to so he could do bad things to them? Who was that guy? I'll figure it out later, but I'm gonna- I'm gonna think about it for the rest of this recording session. Alex, no. Space. Oh god, he's a twitch. Yeah, this guy's in California. It takes a consummate professional to keep screwing up and acting like it's all part of the show. My slot for the Berkeley on-site 2023 open mic went from potential catastrophe to improvising some stand-up before switching back into musician mode. Was he like a robot? He's like, stand up, musician, fuck. Alex is a public figure slash influencer and constantly seeks out the spotlight because of their patterns of behavior and collective following across platforms of over a hundred thousand. There may be other victims. It is best to spread awareness and deplatform them. Please feel free to reach out in DMs if you have any personal experiences. And they end it with, they were blocked. Copies of free and sex best you are. I want to add my own little piece to this, seeing some of the responses in truth. I would not say he's a straight up, you know, that word. I would say he is a predator. He might not target young children, but he does target younger individuals because of the power dynamic it allows. I, I mean, I'll say this too. Technically, he didn't have sex with anyone underage, but what he did was grooming. I mean, that that would be grooming. Allegedly, that, that would be grooming. If he, if he met this... Uh, and he was cuddling with them while they were 17, which is still really weird. Anyway, that's, uh, that's probably the end of this video. Uh, if this is true, I, we should probably make sure this guy doesn't have any access to children. Uh, if it's not, I would hope he would defend himself, because all he seems to do is just block the person who made the allegation, which isn't really very good. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, join the Discord server and, you know, follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to get more followers than my manager. And, uh, I don't know. Later.